In the heart of the Cherokee tribe, women were highly revered for their wisdom and abilities. From a young age, girls were taught how to cook, sew, and care for themselves and their families. They were also taught how to farm, hunt, and fish to feed their families. Men had different roles in society, such as being warriors or hunters, but the women of the tribe held just as much importance. Marriage expectations in Cherokee society were different from Western cultures. Women were free to choose their own husbands and could even practice polygamy if they wanted to. However, it was common for young women to wait until they had finished their education before getting married. The young men of the tribe would often bring gifts or hunt for food as a way of showing their love and respect for a particular woman. Hi guys welcome back to White History. In today's video, we will look at the sex lives of the Cherokee tribe. Relax and enjoy the video. The Cherokee are one of the indigenous peoples of the southeastern woodlands of the United States. Prior to the 18th century, they were concentrated in their homelands, in towns along river valleys of what is now southwestern North Carolina, southeastern Tennessee, southwestern Virginia, edges of western South Carolina, northern Georgia, and northeastern Alabama. By the 19th century, white American settlers had classified the Cherokee of the southeast as one of the five civilized tribes in the region. They were agrarian, lived in permanent villages, and had begun to adopt some cultural and technological practices of the white settlers. They also developed their own writing system. Today, Three Cherokee tribes are federally recognized, the United Ketawa Band of Cherokee Indians in Oklahoma, the Cherokee Nation in Oklahoma, and the Eastern Band of Cherokee Indians in North Carolina. The Cherokee Nation has more than 300,000 tribal members, making it the largest of the 574 federally recognized tribes in the United States. In addition, numerous groups claim Cherokee lineage, and some of these are state-recognized. A total of more than 819,000 people are estimated to have identified as having Cherokee ancestry on the U.S. Census. Most are not enrolled members of any tribe. Marriage. Before the 19th century, polygamy was common among the Cherokee, especially by elite men. The matrilineal culture meant that women controlled property, such as their dwellings, and their children were considered born into their mother's clan, where they gained hereditary status. Advancement to leadership positions was generally subject to approval by the women elders. In addition, the society was matrifocal. Customarily, a married couple lived with or near the woman's family, so she could be aided by her female relatives. Her eldest brother was a more important mentor to her sons than was their father, who belonged to another clan. Traditionally, couples, particularly women, can divorce freely. It was unusual for a Cherokee man to marry a European-American woman. The children of such a union were disadvantaged, as they would not belong to the nation. They would be born outside the clans and traditionally were not considered Cherokee citizens. This is because of the matrilineal aspect of Cherokee culture. As the Cherokee began to adopt some elements of European-American culture in the early 19th century, they sent elite young men, such as John Ridge and Elias Boudano to American schools for education. After Ridge had married a European-American woman from Connecticut and Boudano was engaged to another, the Cherokee Council in 1825 passed a law making children of such unions full citizens of the tribe, as if their mothers were Cherokee. This was a way to protect the families of men expected to be leaders of the tribe. In the late 19th century, the U.S. government put new restrictions on marriage between a Cherokee and non-Cherokee, although it was still relatively common. A European-American man could legally marry a Cherokee woman by petitioning the federal court, after gaining the approval of ten of her blood relatives. Once married, the man had status as an intermarried white, a member of the Cherokee tribe with restricted rights. For instance, he could not hold any tribal office. He remained a citizen of and under the laws of the United States. Common law marriages were more popular. 
Such intermarried whites were listed in a separate category on the registers of the Dawes Rolls, prepared for allotment of plots of land to individual households of members of the tribe. In the early 20th century federal policy for assimilation of the Native Americans, marriage was considered significant in Cherokee culture. It was believed a man must prove himself worthy of a woman before asking for her hand in marriage. If the woman accepted him, he would present gifts to her family as a symbol of his sincerity, seeking their approval to marry her. Cherokee women had autonomy over their bodies, and sexual relations required prior consent from both partners. Divorce was possible if either party decided to end the union and all personal belongings were divided amicably. Gender roles. Men and women have historically played important yet, at times, different roles in Cherokee society. Historically, women have primarily been the heads of households, owning the home and the land, farmers of the family's land, and mothers of the clans. As in many Native American cultures, Cherokee women are honored as life givers. As givers and nurturers of life via childbirth and the growing of plants, and community leaders as clan mothers, women are traditionally community leaders in Cherokee communities. Some have served as warriors, both historically and in contemporary culture in military service. Cherokee women are regarded as tradition keepers and responsible for cultural preservation. The redefining of gender roles in Cherokee society first occurred in the time period between 1776 and 1835. This period is demarcated by De Soto exploration and subsequent invasion, was followed by the American Revolution in 1776, and culminated with the signing of Treaty of New Echota in 1835. The purpose of this redefinition was to push European social standards and norms on the Cherokee people. The long-lasting effect of these practices reorganized Cherokee forms of government towards a male-dominated society which has affected the nation for generations. Miles argues white agents were mainly responsible for the shifting of Cherokee attitudes toward women's role in politics and domestic spaces. These white agents could be identified as white missionaries and white settlers seeking out manifest destiny. By the time of removal in the mid-1830s, Cherokee men and women had begun to fulfill different roles and expectations as defined by the Civilization program promoted by U.S. Presidents Washington and Jefferson. While there is a record of a non-native traveler in 1825 noticing what he considered to be men who assumed the dress and performed the duties of women, this observer was unfamiliar with how the natives in that region dressed. There is no evidence of what would now be considered two-spirit individuals in Cherokee society. This is generally the case in matriarchal and matrilineal cultures, as third gender roles are usually found in patriarchal societies and cultures with more rigid gender roles. Overall, Gender roles in Cherokee society were more fluid than in Western cultures at the time. Women held significant influence within both family units and overall tribal governance. It was common to see women leading ceremonies or providing guidance on important matters within the community. Slavery. Slavery was a component of Cherokee society prior to European colonization as they frequently enslaved enemy captives taken during times of conflict with other indigenous tribes. By their oral tradition, the Cherokee viewed slavery as the result of an individual's failure in warfare and as a temporary status, pending release or the slave's adoption into the tribe. During the colonial era, Carolinian settlers purchased or impressed Cherokees as slaves during the late 17th and early 18th century. The Cherokee were also among the Native American peoples who sold Indian slaves to traders for use as laborers in Virginia and further north. They took them as captives in raids on enemy tribes. As the Cherokee began to adopt some European American customs, they began to purchase enslaved African Americans to serve as workers on their farms or plantations, which some of the elite families had in the antebellum years. When the Cherokee were forcibly removed on the Trail of Tears, they took slaves with them and acquired others in Indian territory. Thanks for watching. Do like, subscribe and leave a comment in the comment section.